Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La Land. I'm so honored to welcome the wellness rabbi herself, Rabbi Judy, to the show. Thank you for being with us oh, today. Thank rabbi you. Rabbi Judy, pleasure to meet you. Rabbi, yes, thank you. We're really excited about really the freedom and exploration of faith in nature with the hikes you've created. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. I mean, what better place to really connect and to plug into what's important? And the Shahike was really um, an opportunity to ask people to step out of a synagogue or a building and to really feel something tangibly because we get locked in when we start to pray mm -hmm. and it's very frontal. And I know that when I walk which and, and when I hike, and I've done quite a bit of hiking, mm -hmm. I took the Spanish Trail oh, and no. walked oh, across. Amazing. Oh, my amazing. gosh. I want to do that one day. <laughs> Not now. <But. laughs> I want to do it again. But those were moments where I realized, wow, in that silence, there's so much being said. Mm. And so I gathered my congregation on a rainy day and said, no matter what, we are going to experience the reality of nature. And it was one of the most amazing experiences because also prayer, that, that steady pace that is in a prayer service is so connected to nature. Right. And the most ancient religious practices mm. were based on nature, winter, spring, summer, fall. And the best thing that I can do is help people to drop into the natural steady rhythm of the universe. Oh. We need so oh, much more yeah. of that. I mean, we, we've got, they've proven it. If, in my opinion, prayer is really about opening up to you know, the consciousness up as wide as possible to be one with the universe. Yes. And no better place to do it in the middle of nature that has that frequency, that harmony, that just has a natural resetting and grounds us to the earth. Absolutely. I brought a doctor with me. I brought right, a writer. It was so interesting who was in this little circle. And everyone had a perspective that began to just open as we elevated ourselves and literally walked up a mountain because so, it was such a wonderful kinesthetic feeling about what happens to our bodies when we do that. Some of the best conversations I've had with myself or with others have been while walking. There Absolutely. is something so special about that where you just are able to open up. And think about it. The journey that our people, or, you know, took in the desert was a walk. The Bible is based on a giant walk mm -hmm. to a promised land, to right. a place where we can manifest who we're supposed to be. Out wow. of the darkness, into the light. Right. Right. So tell people, you know, that don't know, what is a rabbi? Okay. Just for somebody that's watching that doesn't know. And I want to clarify too, I'm a rabbi and a cantor, which is something that's new and very, it, you're going to see a lot more of that. And what are those two things? Mm -hmm. A cantor sings. And so I went to seminary to sing sacred music. And there's a whole beautiful teaching, um, philosophy, years of understanding, for example, what Gregorian chant was about, oh, okay. what that was doing from a vibrational standpoint in our bodies. And that was what was used. The Psalms, they're all based on that kind of uh, vibration. Mm -hmm. So imagine going to school for that. And then as I became the head of a synagogue. Our synagogue is called the Nachshon Minyan Synagogue. And I'll explain who Nachshon <laughs> was in just a moment. I realized there was a need for a rabbi because there really are two clergy. And I didn't know a woman could go to rabbinic school and also be both. And the school that I went to, the Academy of Jewish Religion, said, yeah, you can come and, you, and let's do this mm -hmm. because it's needed. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what set me on this path of Let's find out what's needed. What's already been done is great. Some of it's great, some not so great. I know that I rebelled against it. But what I began to find is there's a place for women in a leadership role that are bringing a whole different perspective. And also that it takes a lot of courage, but that we people who have been through hard times have something to say. And I find that the greatest leaders have had tragedy, pain, as I have myself. And that has pulled me forward to have a voice and to, and that's why I'm here today, is to just say there are people out there. There is um, a pathway that is being created. I love it. You know, we're, we're not political, we're not religious, but as a doctor, I mean, we, we get into all of it, our positive psychology, all of it, and we're always looking at the stories around people awakening and their trials and triumphs and overcoming. And I think that religion is one of those areas that people are afraid of. Like, you know, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of division around it. There's been wars and whatever else, but I believe that the majority of people in religion are really amazing people and, and the religions themselves are really amazing. And 
I think that they're all shifting within them. What shifts? I mean, obviously, as a I woman, love rabbi, that right? you're saying that. So, what what shifts are you seeing? Because there's still, of course, there's going to be darkness and everything. We of live course. in a relative space. But of course. What shifts are you really seeing? I love what you're saying because I think I represent that. You represent that. This show represents that. There are huge shifts going on in our lifetime, and we're responsible for it. Where it's not about separating anymore; it's about including. My synagogue is about inclusivity. There are so many people that are a part of our congregation, and I wanted to create a home for them who are from mixed marriages, inter everything. Mm -hmm. And we all believe in the same thing. We want the same thing. We have the same language. And to break down religion versus spirituality, it's really it's finding a place where there's a togetherness. I have children who don't know the difference. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? Yes. So exciting. That's so exciting. Yes. Right. They don't uh -huh. have the prejudice. They're, and I... I make it a point to work with children as well as 80-year-olds. And what I find on that spectrum is there's a real desire to find out where we connect because we are so isolated in our world. And I think that what you're, even the shahaik was a bringing together. In a month, we're going to be doing a shahaik, bringing together interfaith because it's a Sabbath walk. Oh, yeah. It's worship and walking. And what could be better? I love that point. What do you think is the key to connection? That's a really good question. I, I think that it is that breath and just saying ah, we're all human mm -hmm. and that we're unique. And I think that's why we need a quiet space, meditation, music to find that because the ego is so strong mm -hmm. and we all want to be like somebody else. But truthfully, this is what I try to help people find is what is their path? Not what's, you know, don't look at what's out there, but can you sit in yourself can you drop into who you are and be enough? Mm -hmm. And the books that I've written about how to wake up in the morning, how to close the day with traditional ancient prayer is really how do I find out who I really am? And I think there's an identity that we're looking for. How do I fit in this world? What's my unique piece? Mm -hmm. And I know that that's what you, and giving people the space to do it. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's profound. I love that recognition. One of the things that I cha was challenged with most when I, when about that activity early in life was that I was looking into the world to help the world inform me about who I should be and what I should be. And I discovered that when I was able to close my eyes to the world and drop in here, that it sort of came to the surface on its own, right? And so that's one of the things, I think one of the things I most deeply appreciate about religion and spirituality is that the silence does speak. And you mentioned that earlier, I'd love to know what you've heard in the silence that has been most helpful in your life. Ooh. Good that, isn't that a great <laughs> question? A great question. Yeah. <laughs> Don't compare. Really to find out and get curious about what's inside of me. I am a goal, I, I'm, a, I'm goal oriented. You know, I love life. I love going out there and achieving. That can be negative on some level. And it's really those moments. And I do seriously meditate every day for a few hours. I lay on my back. I drop into who I am. And at those points of the day, as you said, I have to create silence because it gives me a dignity to discover mm. who I am. Mm. Just love that. And mm. that's been my experience too, that when I drop into who I am, it's a thoughtless, wordless state, just a presence. And I think that's one of the reasons I love nature so much too, because nature seems perfectly present. Even as it goes about its activities, same as human beings, it just, there's a presence that's not ever lost in thinking, worrying, scripting. It just does. Yeah, a tree doesn't yeah. want to be a river. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's quite contesting so it's a tree. I'm really happy yes. right here. Yeah. No, I love that. And it's a remind. It's, it's such a profound reminder to, and also a, a bud doesn't say, let's open today. Right. You know, it yeah. just, that natural steady rhythm is so comforting. Right. Hearing the sound of waves, that always brings me back. Mm. What a gift that is. Me too. Well, tell everyone where they can follow you, find you, or and go on one of these hikes. Well, it's called the Nachshon Minion, and you would look up N-A-C-H-S-H-O-N-M-I-N-Y-A-N.org. Love it. What I want to say about Nachshon is maybe you don't know who Nachshon was. He was a person. And at the Red Sea, it was Nachshon who took a leap of faith. And that's when the water split. Oh. Mm. New pathway split. And I had to have the courage to take a leap of faith. I feel like I do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have to have the courage to do that. And I think it comes from 
really wanting to see a new horizon right. that you don't see at all. And a minion is 10, and I built this congregation 10 at a time. They say that when 10 are together, the divine shows up. Mm -hmm. wow. Infinitely, abundantly. Thank you so right. much. Thank, Thank you so much. much. All Thank the you. chosen ones. Thank you. We'll be right back. Yes.